You're the shadow to my light. Did you feel us? Another star, you fade away. Afraid I ain't miss out of sight. Wanna see us? Hello. Timers, what up? Welcome to episode two of Road to Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed. What was that? A little notification from YouTube. Thank you, shout out to you subscribers, those of you hitting that subscribe button, um, getting instant notification on the comments and whatnot, um, I should probably pay attention to the road. <laughs> so guys, this is episode two of Road to Pro. Today is September 7th, 2016. We've still got about 359 days or so until we hit North American 2017, guys. It is 7, 10 a.m. right now, so I am going to the gym 30 minutes earlier uh, than yesterday. Um, I, I feel a lot better. I am a morning person, guys, when it just, you know, when people say, oh, I'm not a morning person, you know, they're cranky. That's definitely not me, um, but I'm not a morning person for working out. Um, not yet, at least. Body's still adapting. Uh, weight felt heavy yesterday, really heavy. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get adjusted, guys. And uh, I like the, uh, I like the, uh, I guess, environment where, you know, just the, the people. Cop, 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 slow down. <laughs> uh, you know, the gym's not too packed right now. I was able to record uh, fairly well. Uh, new tripod is ordered. I, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find my old one. Uh, so that'll be in today is Wednesday. It should be in by Friday, guys, but we'll see. Sorry, I was checking my mirror, making sure that cop didn't follow me. It's like uh, anytime you drive a somewhat of a looking sports car, I guess you could say. I drive a Dodge Charger RT, the eight cylinder. I mean, my car, me, myself, we're, I'm just a magnet when it comes to cops. I've, I've driven, you know, uh, my sister's Jeep and I can sail by a cop going 80 into 60. Won't even pay no mind. I hit 65 in my car going past the past the cop. I'm getting pulled over and get, getting a warning. I kid you not. Um, so where was I, guys? Sorry. Yeah, I may be repeating myself, but okay. Today is back day, guys. Um, so if you follow me on Instagram, I, I touched on this last night. Back is definitely my forte, guys. And if you saw the competition pictures from episode one or on my social media, my back was up there with those uh, top three guys. So keep in mind, guys, fourth place, first national show, two spots away from my IFBB Pro Card. Um, I really felt like I had the best back or neck and neck there, you know, out of, out of us four. Um, I feel like I need more work on my front side, which, you know, would be my, my, uh, my front deltoid and then my upper chest. And, um, but as far as my back guys, there's always room for improvement. I will definitely focus more on my weak points in my back, which is more of the upper portion guys. I'm a huge fan of doing proper lap pull downs and really emphasizing the stretch and getting that width and getting that V taper. And this, you know, don't take this the wrong way or anything like that, but I feel like my V taper, you know, that uh, that shoulder to waist ratio, basically the smaller your waist is and, and the wider your back and shoulders are, it, it creates that V illusion for those of you that aren't familiar with v, what, what, what a V taper is called in the bodybuilding world. Um, it's really cold. Uh, I would like to add a little bit more thickness all around in my back, and if I do get a little bit wider, a little bit, uh, you know, more of a V taper in the process, then that's fine, guys. But instead of focusing on a ton of lap pull downs and pull ups and weighted pull ups and uh, dumbbell rows, I'm oh well, I'll still be hitting rows, guys. But the position, and I'll, I'll take you this through throughout the commentary. What really I guess you could say manipulates or what targets different areas of your back is where your elbows drive past your body in a row. So if we're in a row position, wherever they come past, whether it's up high, in the middle, or down low, is really going to emphasize or target different areas of the back. And um, so just stay tuned for the commentary on that, guys. I, I really think that this is going to be helpful. Um, and. Honestly, guys, everyone loves to hit chest. Everyone loves to hit bench press. And uh, not too many people have a hard time 
getting that pump or really get finding that contraction when it comes to chest workouts because you're able to see yourself. When you're doing a back workout, when, when you're doing a row, when you're doing a lap pull down, your back is behind you. You're not able to see you know, your back muscles. So you really have to focus and get that mind to muscle connection and make sure that you're feeling it in the right areas that you're trying to target guys. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. So I'll go ahead and tell you that the key points for today are elbows, 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 guys. If your biceps, if you're doing a back workout and your biceps and forearms are getting sore and your back isn't, I can guarantee you you're going too heavy. Sorry guys, the sun is right in my face. You are going too heavy and you're jerking that weight back versus grabbing just firmly guys and then driving back with the elbow. Driving the elbow back is what's going to engage that those lats and engage that back guys, not the bicep and the forearm. The bicep is the uh, secondary when it comes to a, uh, a back movement. So we have primary muscles and we have secondary muscles, guys. Sorry, I'm recording like at this angle because the sun is right in my face and you guys can see me better than here. At least I think so. Um, yeah, that's a green light. Um, so we have primary and then we have secondary muscles, guys. When you start using, and, and in this case, obviously if you're working out your back, your primary muscle should be your back and your secondary muscle should be your biceps. Once you start going too heavy and you're just jerking the weight and you know just throwing it without you know fully contracting or concentrating, guys, you've probably now made your your biceps and your forearms the primary and your back the secondary. So you're defeating the purpose of your back day. And you're not getting the most out of it. Um, as far as episode one, when we hit a chest workout, some you know um, chest would be the primary, guys and uh, triceps would be the secondary. Uh, on that end, guys, uh, maybe I should have touched on this yesterday, but that's okay. So I hope that bo you guys are uh, gonna watch all these videos so uh, it won't make a difference because you know what I'm talking about because you, yeah, you, you watched episode one. If you didn't, stop watching this video and go watch it then come right back. <laughs> so uh, yeah, guys, if you're going all the way down, you know, that barbell touching your chest, and coming all the way up, you're making you know that chest the primary and the triceps the secondary. If you're only going halfway down, then you're really only activating the chest slightly and making the uh, making the 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 triceps your primary and the chest the secondary. So if I guess that would be kind of let me let me try guys. It, it might not work. I'm like, I'm not gonna cut this out. I'm gonna keep it raw, guys. But it might not work. So, move this. So, if I'm benching, right? Imagine I'm flat, okay? As I'm bringing the weight down, okay? Here, the bar would be on my chest, okay? So, now my chest is fully stretched out and I'm going to explode upward. Notice that the chest is engaging first and then the tricep. If I, like most gym gurus or guys who lift with ego and they go too heavy, and they say, oh, I can't touch my chest because of injury. But bullshit, you're just going too heavy. And um, if you got hurt, you're probably not you know, doing the mobility work, which I touched on, etc., guys. But okay, besides the point, if they're only going halfway, boom, tricep is activated, here's fully extended, boom, 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 halfway. Tricep, guys, and back up, that's a tricep workout. And, and from this angle, guys, only going halfway, look, the chest is not activated. But if I'm coming all the way down, look at that stretch, then boom. So that's what I mean, guys, that in proper form, you know, lifting too heavy and not getting a weight that you can actually control, you're ruining your workout and you're not getting the most out of it. Sorry, I think I was covering the lens a little bit. Again, guys, same goes for back. Don't toss the weight back too many times and, and, and you'll see it, guys, but I'd rather tell you guys right here before we go in there, so this is a row, coming here and pulling the weight to you, not this shit that I see all the time, or this, or this. No, guys, that is not a fucking row, I'm sorry. But grab the weight firmly, so my arms are now engaged, they're not gonna do any anything like this or like this or nothing. I've, I've grabbed the weight and all I'm gonna do is drive that elbow back drive that elbow back. Same thing for pull downs. We're going to grab the bar, so I'm scrunching down, and we're going to drive the elbows down. We're not going to do 
jumping shit and moving backwards and all this. No, guys, we're going to pull the weight to us. But that's enough of that, guys. I hope that helped. I will. I may touch on this a little bit more in the commentary. Uh, but we'll see, guys. The gym looks... It looks a little bit more packed than yesterday. I think it's because it's earlier. So maybe a lot of these people are going to head to work. Hopefully. Um, no, guys. I, I absolutely love seeing people in the gym. It's just I, I want to be able to record. Um, but it, it motivates me when I see uh, beginners. When I see you know anybody in the gym. It's just like if you made it through those doors. Then you're doing something right. I'm not one that's like why are these people here. They don't know how to lift. No, no, no. Guys, go to the gym. Do what you can. We all start somewhere. And keep it positive vibes. Positive vibes everywhere, guys. Um. If I forgot to touch on anything, I will touch on it on the, in the commentary, guys, or touch on it after, because I'm probably going to watch this while I do cardio and make sure I didn't forget anything to tell you guys. Um, so I may talk to you guys after the workout again. But other than that, let's kill this back day, guys. I'm excited. Um, let's get it, guys. Episode 2, Road to Pro! T-Timers, what's going on? Eddie checking in again with the voiceover. Hope you found that helpful in episode one for chest day. This is back day, guys. So uh, taking the warm-up very seriously again, guys, just as I did for chest day. Uh, starting off with some scapular pull-ups, guys. This is going to really test you as far as how much control you truly have of your body weight and how strong your back truly is, guys. It's going to uh, challenge you uh, to be able to retract your scapula while hanging in a pull-up position, guys. Uh, so I do this, uh, again, I do about three circuits of the whole warm-up that you're about to see. Uh, and then here, like your typical lat stretch, shoulder stretch, uh, putting your hand or your arm up against something and then pushing your head through. Uh, do both sides. Um, I think I got a clip of the... Uh, scapular pull-ups, uh, but, but a bit closer so you can actually see what's going on. Um, something else that I also do, guys, is just grab onto the, uh, grab onto the bar and just hang there for a good, you know, 10 seconds and just get that full, full lat stretch. I do swing a little bit, but try to limit that swing, guys, um, and just really focus on stretching the lat out and getting it ready for the, for the workout ahead. Um, Yes, I believe the, the video of the uh, scapular pull-ups, well, you know, on a closer end is up next, guys. So hopefully this one will be a little bit more helpful so you can see what's exactly going on. So as you can see, I'm not pulling up necessarily. I'm almost leaning back. Probably should have recorded a side angle for you. But if not, look up scapular pull-ups, guys. Um, so again, retracting the scapula and just holding it for a split second. This is going to get me ready with that mind-to-muscle connection and uh, really emphasize the focus and the contraction in the whole workout, guys. Uh, something else for my warm-up that I like to do are pullovers. Sometimes I do do these in my actual workout with heavy working sets, guys, uh, but they're a great movement for you to warm up and really get those uh, shoulders uh, rotating and, and, and getting warmed up as, as well as the lats and uh, getting used to driving your elbows downward, guys. So as I pull down, I bring my chest and my head up and really squeezing for about a one to two count on the bottom end. Uh, I did have a friend record this uh, portion. Uh, the rest I was on my own. <clears throat> um, also, guys, part of still part of the warm up, guys. Um, don't go to failure on these guys. Um, I'm doing sets of five of pull ups. I mean, I could easily do about 15 to 20 per set. Uh, so we're not looking to go to failure here, guys. We're just trying to get a good warm up. Uh, notice that right side is still giving me a little bit of issues. It's uh, not flaring out as it should be. I'm still getting a lot of work done with the uh, with massage therapy and the chiropractor. Um, it is getting better though. Um, but yeah, guys, so all of that that you just saw was my warm-up. Everything that you saw, I did about three circuits of that, guys. So definitely about a 15 to 20 minute warm-up, guys. It is key. It is so beneficial, guys. And it's going to pay off in the long run. It's going to, um, you know, prevent injury. Uh, you know, you're, you're less likely to get injured if you have a proper warm-up, guys. Injuries will still occur, um, but regardless. So here we move on to an overhand seated cable row. So not using the typical triangle or V-grip, guys, because, again, I want to emphasize the upper back. So notice where my elbows are coming back. They're actually pretty high up. But not too high up to where it's like a uh, reverse pec deck fly for the rear delt. 
Um, so about mid to high abdomen, guys. Um, and I'm not swinging at all whatsoever. I'm pulling the weight to me. But really emphasize and, and notice that the elbows are coming in a lot higher than if I were using the typical triangle V-grip. They'd be coming closer to my belt, uh, more in my bu belly button area, guys. Uh, I did film another angle for you guys on this uh, seated cable row. Um, so you could see exactly where the bar is uh, hitting me. Um, and you can get a, a better understanding. I think I did that for multiple workouts, guys. Got uh, multiple angles if I felt the need. Uh, or I felt that it would be beneficial for you guys. So, again, here, getting in position and pulling straight into my upper abdomen, guys. The elbows are coming straight back. I'm not swinging. I'm controlling each and every single rep, guys. I'm, I'm pulling the weight to me. I'm not jerking it backwards and I'm not moving my chest forward as, as I you know pull the weight back I do lean forward slightly ever so slightly just to get that full stretch but I'm in control 100% of the time um, then we moved on to one of my favorite movements guys pendele rows um, here guys it's almost like a deadlift you want to activate your hamstrings that's what I was trying to emphasize right there guys activate the hamstrings drive the heels into the ground keep your glutes high okay so it's almost like a deadlift so here my glutes are high this is probably as low as they're gonna go I'm gonna roll back a little bit right there boom and I'm going to begin to pull guys notice my back is almost flat to 90 degrees it's not on a high end uh, closer to the 45 degree end so try to keep your back as flat as possible and pull that uh, the bar into your upper abdomen guys again I'm really focusing on the upper back uh, this off season uh, here's a different angle guys so again key is to really tilt backwards uh, keep your head neutral and bring your chest up this is going to allow your spine your back to stay straight at all times guys once you lift the weight my my gym doesn't have round weights uh, it's kinda like an octagon shape so uh, I do prefer pulling straight from the ground for each and every single rep, but I pick the weight that I can handle and that I can hover it right over the right over the ground so that I can uh, avoid it rolling forward or anything like that, guys. Uh, so again, pulling to the upper abdomen, guys, and it's an overhand grip, so it's not your typical uh, barbell row, guys. This is completely flat or as close to flat as possible and pulling to the upper abdomen. Um, then we moved on to... Uh, rack pulls guys again this is a form I guess you could say kind of like a deadlift taking out the leg portion but I'm taking it just as serious guys uh, notice my glutes are high then I'm resetting boom now everything's activated everything's locked in and I'm pulling straight up guys um, so yeah guys if you uh, have legs the next day at this point I wasn't sure if I was going to hit legs uh, tomorrow on episode three or hit shoulders so I definitely did not want to hit deadlifts today and have my hamstrings worn out for the following leg day um, however I, I will be hitting shoulders uh, tomorrow for episode three and then legs for episode four um, so I do like to incorporate these especially now that I'm trying to target the the upper back and the trap area guys these these are brutal when it comes to that uh, here's another angle guys I uh, just wanted to show you guys a little bit better uh, contraction. I guess you could say it was hard to see um, from that side angle, but that side angle did show how I uh, got myself into position for every single rep, guys. Notice I'm not bouncing the weight. I'm actually resetting it. My gym doesn't have... Uh, it has a squat rack, but I would have to set it too high, um, and it would be actually closer to mid quad versus right above my knee you want to set the bar or have it at a place where it's right right above your knee guys um so not too high and definitely not too low to where it's uh exhausting your hamstrings guys uh, but take these seriously guys and lift safely because uh <laughs> it, it, you do need to go heavy on these to get the most out of it but uh pick a weight that you can handle guys so no bouncing reset it and uh take each rep seriously um, here we did a little back double bicep. Um, that's a screenshot. I took a screenshot of that and uploaded a picture on Instagram. So make sure you're following me on Instagram, um, Eduardo underscore Jaimez. So this is your typical overhand lap pull down. But guys, please pay attention to how strict they are. 
uh, you will be able to see it more so on the second uh, clip, on the second angle. But guys, notice that I am not swinging backwards. I'm my my thing is, guys, the the only thing that should be moving are your elbows. Tilt your head slightly back as the bar is coming down. Don't smack yourself in the head. But other than that, guys, everything else should stay locked in. Drive the elbows downward. Focus on the lats and really squeeze, guys. And go all the way up for each and every rep in order for your lats to really get that full stretch, engage. And that's going to allow them to grow and really emphasize and give you that V-taper. Um, so here's a side angle, guys. Arms are fully extended. Boom. Notice that there is no swinging or jerking. I'm not almost laying down how I see it so much, guys. Uh, control the weight. So notice I'm pulling back and I'm moving my head back ever so slightly just to get, you know, just to uh, not get hit with the bar. What I try to tell people is pull to your collarbone, guys. Don't pull to your lower chest. I see that so many times, guys. Pull to your collarbone, upper chest area. Uh, and limit the swing. No swing whatsoever, guys. Um, here we moved on to a hammer strength high row, guys. Um, I recorded a second clip on this one as well, guys. Here I'm kind of showing you my hand placement and then uh, how I get tight with my legs. Then pay attention. It might be hard to see here, but I kind of roll back my shoulders. This is going to activate my lats and get me con uh, fully contracted and my whole body essentially will be completely tight after I roll back my shoulders and from there on out guys all I have to do is pull back uh, you can't see from here but in the next angle you will um, in the next clip you will and I'll, I'm basically going to demonstrate what I see a lot of and you know it's okay if you've been doing this but don't do it anymore and then I'll show you the proper way again this is just to show you the contraction from the back but the second angle the side angle will be a lot helpful so I didn't know how I was going to uh, upload this but this is what not to do as you can see in the video um, facial expressions swinging back jerking the weight look at that look how far back I'm leaning guys no that's not what you do <laughs> so this is what you do guys firmly grasp the handles <laughs> get in there tight boom slide in to where your back is now straight retract those shoulders Get tight, deep breath, no more swinging. Pull and pull the weight to you, guys. This is what I was talking about. Stop jerking the weight. Pull the weight to you. I'm not leaning back. My stomach, my abdomen is staying on the pad at all times, guys, and my chest is only moving back ever so slightly, and I'm not swinging or jerking the weight, guys. So if you can't handle the weight, you're not getting more out of it by going heavier, guys. Please understand that you're just... Uh, increasing the risk of injury and you're not getting you know maximum results from it uh, then we moved on to reverse pec deck flies guys um, this is my pref my preference as far as the handle uh, key notes on this guys is just to keep your elbows high and throw them wide guys uh, really feel for the contraction on the end and make sure that you're uh, spreading your arms evenly and uh Lower the seat, guys. If you lower the seat, your elbows will already be high. Think about it. So if, you're, if your seat is too high, your, your elbows are going to be too low. So I actually set the, set the seat pretty low. That way my hands are uh, right at eye level, which is going to allow my elbows to stay high. And then, guys, we finished off the workout with uh, five sets of 12 of cable, uh, cable curls. Nothing fancy, guys. Uh, keep it simple. Uh, spider curls and all this you will never see me do like random shit like that guys I mean the best way to gauge progress is to keep it simple track the weight that you're lifting and track the reps that you're hitting with that weight and increase over time that's something that's called progressive overload guys that's the best way to track progress now with all these fancy workouts keep it simple guys I always tell people if you want a big chest you have to bench press more if you want a big back you have to be able to pull uh, do go heavier on lap pull downs and go heavier on rows. It's that simple, guys. You want big biceps, you have to curl more. So I hope you guys enjoy this commentary. Peace out, guys. All right, guys. So workout number two, episode number two, Road to Pro. Back day is done. Back in biceps. Uh, very good workout, guys. I'll talk to you guys more in the car. Um, let me do a little bit of posing here for you guys.
what's going on guys so i hope you enjoyed that commentary guys a lot of helpful tips a lot of different angles for you guys um so that you can you know have a successful back workout and actually get that mind and muscle connection uh, keeping that you know that weight path you know where it's supposed to be and really finding and feeling that contraction that i always preach on guys um versus you know just moving weight um it was kind of ironic uh i was going to talk to you guys during cardio but uh had a had a guy come up to me and he would just kind of tell me his story and uh whatnot and then i had a uh, a younger guy come up to me and he started you know telling me he was having lower back issues and uh that he felt you know and i immediately asked him you know well uh are you doing heavy t-bar rows are you doing deadlifts etc he said yes i think it might be the deadlifts he proceeded to show me a video of him deadlifting and i mean i watched about two seconds of it got off the treadmill and spent the past 30 to 40 minutes correcting his form uh, and he was getting advice from you know friends uh, my advice to you guys is if you don't know 100 percent what you're doing don't give advice and don't steer people the wrong way uh you know at 19 years old he should not be having back issues um you know and it, he's a very strong kid it wasn't that he was going most you know really heavy deadlifting that 315 it was just that his form was completely off um uh, i will record deadlifts for you guys um but yeah he was just rounding the back he was not sitting the weight on his heels, bringing his, keeping his head neutral. I don't like to bring my head up. I keep it neutral, and my chest, but my chest is up, if that makes sense. So chest up, head neutral, and tilt the weight, tilt your body weight back. Uh, in essence, what's called nowadays pulling the slack, activating the lats, and engaging every single muscle, and locking it in tightly to where the only thing that can move now is your legs, guys. A deadlift starts with your legs. I don't care if it's back day and you decide to do your deadlifts on back day. Deadlifts start with your legs and your hamstrings are key, guys. If you're not engaging those hamstrings and those glutes before you lift the weight, you're fucking up and your back is going to round, okay? I personally do my deadlifts on leg day simply because it's so taxing on my hamstrings. Um, I do alternate between sumo deadlifts and, you know, your basic conventional deadlifts, uh, stiff leg deadlifts as well. And uh, I guess over the years, guys, and it's back, is my forte. I, I do get sore with deadlifts, but mainly on my hamstrings, not so much my back. However, I do separate my back and my, and my leg day by two days for that reason. Uh, also, you know, I want to emphasize a little bit more work on the traps. Ah, fuck, I forgot to do shrugs take note next time um uh, i haven't done shrugs in years guys uh but i do want to bring up that upper back like we talked about so today i did do uh rack pulls which is a form of a deadlift if you saw and like i touched on on the commentary uh you take it very seriously you take a deep breath get tight sit back chest up head neutral and pull and squeeze uh same thing with the with the deadlifts it's basically a deadlift but taking the the leg portion out guys uh so in two days tomorrow shoulder day um i'm going to hit squats and i'm going to hit deadlifts uh ooh, and then i if you follow me on snapchat i'm excited because i bought those new converse over in uh florida got them for like 19 bucks freaking steel i had a converse outlet out there in destin florida so uh yeah guys i'm excited new shoes they match my spd knee sleeves <laughs> oh crap um but yeah guys i really hope you enjoyed that commentary i hope you know please note not every single video is going to be a commentary i may do like if i get to work out with somebody which i'll, I'll invite people every now and then but most aren't very open to working out at 7 30 a.m i know i wasn't before um and you know if i could get various angles and, and different footage and everything like that that lighting though um then i think it would be awesome to record like a badass um edit you know with music and cutting the clips and everything like that i've done that before uh but you know it's always been with uh you know when, when I can get a, a more variety of angles, you know, of angles, you know, close up, close, you know, zoomed out, etc., etc. Um, but yeah, guys, that was day two. 
you know, workout number two, Road to Pro, uh, episode two. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I think for now, at least, guys, unless I have something, you know, planned or whatnot, I'm just going to keep it strictly, um, you know, footage in the gym, you know, the drive to the gym, the gym, the workout, and then, you know, a, a little post-workout talk like I'm doing now. Um, it's 10 a.m. now, so I've got some work to do. Um, got to go somewhere at 12, so i got about an hour and a half to cook a quick meal, take a shower, get a meal plan adjustment done for one client. Um, but yeah, guys, if you're interested in online coaching, online training with me, I do use uh, the, the basis of flexible dieting with when you use, uh, use properly guys meaning i i do make you not make you but i do recommend you to eat your micronutrient micronutrient dense foods you know your wholesome foods your chicken your veggies etc but please note that i do twist every meal up guys you will not have a boring meal plan with me guys uh you know pastas turkey burgers tacos um omelets um pancakes uh you know Pretty much everything, you know, that you may or want or desire in a diet, I can almost make work. Everything has to be, you know, lower fat, you know, no cooking with oil, etc. Um, but yeah, guys, if you are interested in that, I do offer uh, meal plans. I do offer workouts and I do offer the combo, the combination of the two. Um, if you're interested in that, all my information is down below, guys. Uh, www.t-time.co, t-time.co. That's train, transform, inspire, motivate, educate. And with that, guys, it's a wrap. Episode two, Road to Pro is done. See you tomorrow for episode three. We've got shoulders, triceps, and maybe a little bit of biceps. I only got one work, one bicep work on in today, so we'll see how they wake up. But uh, yeah, guys, I'm excited. We are out. Teatime.co. Hashtag Teatime.co. Bam. You were the shadow to my light. Did you feel us? Another star. You fade away. Afraid I ain't miss out of sight. Wanna see us?